Big Joe and Malia's live chat tonight, Malia mentioned how much she likes goats and how she wants one. And I said, I need to tell you my goat story sometime about the goat I used to have. So this is that story. It's for Malia or anybody else who wants to listen. I don't know if I would say this story is funny or just amazing that it happened because it is a little odd or both because <laughs> I find humor in a lot of stuff I probably shouldn't sometimes but this is the goat story no names included because this really hasn't been too long ago even though it has been a few years me and a friend took off driving around once it was in September the weather was nice we decided to go for a drive through the country and we made it to Richmond and we were coming by the fairgrounds and looked over and the parking lot was full and it looked like they were having some kind of festival or something so we decided let's pop in there and see what's going on so they have all these booths set up everybody's selling stuff and this one man has livestock and one of the things he has is a little pygmy goat and the way it was colored it looked just like like a baby deer in horns well i've always wanted a goat Probably more than I've let on. I, goats are, they're smart. You can train them to do tricks. They've got weird personalities. They're funny. Goats are just cool. So, I'd ask my dad at one point if I could get one and keep it on our farm. Got way up on a mountain. He said, no, it'd get lonely. It'd run away. Something might eat it, which is the truth up there. So, I never got to have a goat. But I'm thinking, this pygmy goat, you know, people keep those in the house and I have a fenced in backyard I've got a tool shed that I don't use that it could have for a house something all right I might get this goat and I don't remember how much it cost but it was like something stupid like 20 bucks I'm like 20 bucks and there's this goat so I started thinking about it and I thought I should probably call my dad and ask him Mainly because I pretty much knew he would say no. <laughs> he says no to a lot of things. So I'm like, that's probably the answer I really need to hear right now anyway. So I'm gonna call. So I call him, tell him I want this goat, explain what I'm thinking about it. He says, sure, go ahead and get it. Hang up the phone. But this is a sign from God. <laughs> if he said yes, let's get it. So we get this goat. We walk around the spare on a rope. You know, well behaved. I don't know if they had trained it or why, but it walked around with us. We went in one of the pavilions and they're having a cake and pie auction. Now, I'm here to tell you, this is one of those cake and pie auctions where the little old ladies that live out in the country are making these things from scratch and they look good. So we went in there and sat and watched it. And every cake that sold, we'd look at each other and be like, man, why didn't we bid on that? We could be taking that home. So we're starting to get hungry. Then up comes this huge German chocolate cake. This cake was probably that tall. And we decided that was gonna be the cake we were taking home with us. So we bid on it. I don't remember how much we paid for it. It wasn't much nothing, like 12 bucks or something. We get this cake. So off we go and comes to mind. I drive an S10 pickup. We now have us, a goat that probably won't stay in the back of the truck, and a German chocolate cake that I'll have to ride in the front. So we all <laughs> get in the truck. The goat was very well behaved. It stayed in the floorboard for the most part. It peep up. It never went for the cake. It was a pretty uneventful ride home. So we get back to my house and put the goat in the backyard. And me and my friend are like, we've got to eat right now. Like, I could have eat the couch cushion. I was so hungry. And so, let's just tear into this cake. It's here. We don't have to cook. Go get nothing. Let's eat it. So I went and got my great big, big knife. And I thought, I'm just going to cut this thing in half. And I'm going to eat half of it. <laughs> and you eat the other half. And we'll just eat till we get sick. About that time the phone rings. And it's my neighbor from down the street. My street had five houses and it dead into the side of the hill and for some reason there was not a day went by that there was not some sort of religious solicitor knocking on the door 
every denomination, different religions, the Hare Krishnas, like you wouldn't believe it was all the time. So my neighbor calls, she says, there's a church group going knocking on the doors. I thought I'd call and let you know so you don't go to the door. I'm like, okay, thank you. So I tell my friends, like, these people are getting knocked on the door. We're supposed to sit here and be quiet and not go to the door. About that time, they start knocking. And they knocked again. Then they knocked again, loud. Then they knocked like it was the police. And at first, we thought it was funny. We were sitting there you know, trying not to laugh and everything, but... When they got loud, I started getting mad because I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm not coming to the door. Well, then I hear a voice outside say, I know they're in there. I hear the TV on. So I tell my friends, they knock one more time. I'm going through that door on somebody. This is stupid. Well, it gets quiet. I turn around to go back into the kitchen, cut the cake. About the time a man pops out into the kitchen from the laundry room. I freaked. I'm like, what? I had the knife already. I was like, all right, bud, today's your day. I pinned him against the back wall and I'm not I can't repeat, you know, what I said. It was colorful, very colorful, colorful. And I asked him, like, what are you doing? You have broke into my house. I'm like, I have every right to cut your head off. What are you doing? This man had opened my back gate, walked all the way around the backyard, opened the back door, come across the laundry room, opened the door to the kitchen, and came in. That's burglary second degree, technically. So he's like, I wish you wouldn't call it burglary. I'm like, no, it's burglary. You broke into my house. What is wrong with you? He's like, I, it's a wonder I've not drove this knife clean through your head. For real. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but we thought you were home because we heard the television and then we noticed that you have a goat. And then he proceeds to tell me this story in the Bible about a goat getting sacrificed on an altar. I'm like, who are these crazy people? They broke into my house and now they're talking about sacrificing a goat and I just happened to have a goat? Okay, I'm like, you gotta go. So I went out the back door. I didn't let him come all the way come to the house to the front door. <laughs> so he leaves. My friend's in the living room completely freaked out. She's like, I thought you were going to kill him. I thought I was too. Like, you don't do that. So we proceed to eat on this cake. And we're in shock. Complete shock. This man has just walked right up in there like he owned the place or something. And I told her, I said, it's really odd. Like, what would he think if I just walked up in his house one day, made myself at home? You know, he wouldn't appreciate that. And what happened to do unto others is you'd have them do unto you. If he did that to me, I would assume that means he'd be okay if I did that to him. But we know better. So that point, I was working at the newspaper, and I had a column that I wrote in the paper every week. And I thought, you know, I'm going to bring this up. I'm not, I really didn't know what church it was or anything at this point. So, you know, I thought, maybe I'll find out by doing this. So I just wrote my column and said, you know why would you do that to somebody? And am I wrong for thinking this? Like you just don't come up in people's house regardless and tell them we're killing a goat. So paper comes out and the next day I get a visitor and he comes to the desk and he sits down and he is the pastor at the church that had sent people out knocking on the doors. And it's a, not like big church, but you know, it's a church here in town, pretty good size. And he's apologizing to me. He's like, you know, they should never have done that. I completely understand why you were upset. You know, I thank you for not calling the police. And I was like, you understand that he broke into my house. And he says, well, he didn't really break into your house. I'm like, he opened a gate and two doors to get to where he was. He, he broke into my house. If I did that in anybody's house, I'd expect to be shot, you know? So he keeps on apologizing and I say, you know, that's, I appreciate you taking your time out and coming up here to address this. And I appreciate you apologizing, but you don't have anything to apologize for. You didn't do it. Where's the guy who did it? If somebody's going to apologize, it should be him. Am I wrong? So the pastor apologized again. I said, 
I appreciate that. You know, I accept that. But you didn't do it. Did you tell him to do it? He's like, no. I said, then you have nothing to apologize for. So, you know, we left. It wasn't ugly or nothing like that. But I was just, I don't see why you're apologizing for something you did not do. <sighs> After that, everything with the goat was great. You know, sometimes he'd come in the house. I named him Bocephus. Um, I quit letting him come in the house because he ate all the leaves off of one of those fake ficus trees that was in the living room. We stripped it bare one day. So he stayed out in the yard after that. But the end of the next week, I got notified by the code's office that I could not have livestock in the city. And I had to get rid of Bocephus. And I was, I was mad. I'm not going to get into any finger pointing about somebody that may have called in on me, but you do the math how you want to. <laughs> and what's really interesting, at this time in the city, there was a lot of people pushing to be able to have chickens in their backyards so they can have eggs. And we have an ordinance that, you know, you can't have any kind of livestock. You know, the ordinance went way back to like the 1920s or something when it was written. But my goat that was in my backyard actually got brought up in a city council meeting when they were discussing whether or not to allow chickens because one of the council members said, you know, people have pygmy goats and those little pygmy pigs and all that kind of stuff as pets now. You know, it's having five chickens in town really an issue in your yard if you have a big yard or whatever. So it actually got brought up in that debate and I think you can have little goats. Now I know a lot of people sure have chickens in town these days. <laughs> but that's it for the goat story. I hope it entertained you. At least give you a little something to think about. But as always, whenever a door closes, open it back up again. Because that's how doors work.